Right at the trade deadline, the Toronto Raps decided to move on from Terrence Davis and acquired a second round pick from the Sacramento Kings in return. And after posing some eye popping stats with the Kings, did the Toronto Raptors give up on Terrence Davis too early and make a mistake by trading him? Let's get into it. Welcome Raptors fans and possibly other NBA fans. This is Amateur Hour Sports, the channel where you get NBA content with a focus on the Toronto Raptors at least four days a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday is our upload schedule. So if you like what you see from today's video, you want more of myself talking about the Raptors in videos just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to show your support to the channel. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers, getting very close to that milestone. Also, check out our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash amateur sports. We're watching on a ton of NBA playoff games together plus doing some other fun stuff so get yourself involved with the link in the description but today we are talking about Terrence Davis honestly not a topic that I was particularly looking forward to talking to but I think it's one that I did kind of want to give my uh, sort of final address towards before we can move on from it because it, it's a controversial player to talk about and I've talked about him on the channel before and it sparked a lot of controversy whenever his name comes up in any of our Twitch streams it gets a little cagey within the chat and for obvious reasons so to make it as simple as possible for today 99% of this video is going to be strictly about basketball we're only going to talk about basketball and whether or not the Toronto Raptors made a mistake in trading Terrence Davis in regards to basketball. 99% of the video is going to be that. So with that in mind, keep the comments about the basketball as well because I know it can get a little bit tense about this guy. So let's get started. So at the trade deadline, it looked like the Raptors were about to trade Kyle Lowry. Matt Thomas got moved on for a second round pick to open up a roster spot. Then Terrence Davis gets moved to the Sacramento Kings for a second round pick to open up a roster spot. Now, it pointed towards, wow, okay, Kyle Lowry's getting traded. They opened up roster spots. They gave away assets for second round picks. Kyle Lowry is certainly getting traded. We're going to bring in more than just one player back, and that's why we need those roster spots open. But then a Kyle Lowry trade didn't materialize, and that left a little bit of a sour taste in Toronto Raptors fans' mouths because, you know, earlier in the day, we got rid of Norman Powell, which was a big shock getting Gary Trent and Rodney Hood in return, you know, people like myself have really come around on that trade. But as we progress, you know, we think, hey, we didn't get a center and we got rid of two of our assets for second round picks and didn't move on from Kyle Lowry. This is a little peculiar. This is weird. Why didn't we do anything at the deadline? But then, you know, as time eased on, I think we started to understand potentially the bigger picture, i.e. maybe Masai Ujiri was looking to tank and didn't really get anything in return for Kyle Lowry. So we were left with a couple of open roster spots, which I think we did utilize very well. You know, those open roster spots helped us get Ken Birch off waivers, who looked like a great player after coming in, and I really hope that we can bring back for next season. It also opened up a roster spot for Freddie Gillespie. Freddie Gillespie to get a lot of play time and showcase that he has some NBA talent that I want to see if the Raptors can harness over the summer. But, you know, we're not talking about these guys. We're talking about Terrence Davis, who moved on to the Sacramento Kings. A year removed of all rookie second team, he was worth a second round pick. Now, for starters, the value that we got for Terrence Davis, some people would say it's a little bit low. And, you know, maybe it was a little bit low for a guy coming off of an all rookie second team, you know, putting up around eight points per game with the Raptors, mild efficiency, you know, efficiency that you can live with for the position and one that would certainly improve as the player got older. Uh, that summer was surrounded by controversy, but he remained with the team where I feel like this was the season, and I talked very highly of him last offseason, what he could become with the Raptors, because all the signs pointed towards a player who could significantly improve, and I thought a jump was going to come this season, but instead of a jump, there was a regression, and his shooting stats dropped a little bit, and I think that his decision-making was just a huge problem for the Raptors, which ultimately led to a second-round pick. Now, speaking of the second-round pick, again, people thinking that maybe that is a little bit low for Terrence Davis, that was about the value got for players on trade deadline day. Evan Fournier earlier in the day got traded away from the Orlando Magic who were looking to load up on future assets. They got two second round picks from Boston for Evan Fournier. Now you would think Evan Fournier, a solid player, a solid shooting guard, a solid guy who put the ball in the basket, would be worth more than two second round picks. So based on the assessment that Evan Fournier is worth two second round picks, we see that Matt Thomas plus Terrence Davis are also worth two second round picks so essentially we got the same valuation of Terrence Davis and Matt Thomas that the Orlando Magic got for 
Evan Fournier. So based on that valuation, based on thinking about it that way, I feel like the return really isn't that bad. And you know, Matt Thomas never got used by the Raptors anyway. So second round pick for him, A-OK with me, Terrence Davis. Sure, the, the Raptors weren't really using him at the time, whatever. Two second round picks and some open roster spots. It is what it is. The valuation maybe wasn't the best, but based on other guys on that day, on trade deadline day, makes a little bit of sense. So Terrence Davis goes to the Sacramento Kings, where, you know, doesn't really put up many eye-popping stats, but then all of a sudden, he has that 27-point game. And now Raptors fans are starting to ask the question of, okay, well, did we mess up trading Terrence Davis to the Sacramento Kings? All in all, I think that his stats look a little bit skewed. He averaged about 11 points per game with the Sacramento Kings, in 27 games, his efficiency improved very slightly with the Sacramento Kings. Started shooting around 44% from the field, 37% from three. Those are good numbers. Those are numbers that you would accept for a guy in that position. But, you know, it, it, he's well beyond stats, Terrence Davis. His stats don't really tell the whole tale. And statistically speaking, in the 27 games he was there, he only put up more than 10 points in a game on 12 occasions. And in the first 17 games that he was there with the Sacramento Kings, he only managed to put up more than 10 points four times. Then near the end of the season, the Kings are winding down. They're not going to make the playoffs. So in the last 10 games, he has eight games where he puts up at least 10 points. And I think maybe quite a bit of that is down to teams are starting to rest guys. Teams are starting to tank, you know, end the season without any hopes of making the playoffs. Maybe that's what it came down to. But ultimately, when you compile all of the games together, it's really not that impressive what Terrence Davis produced. It's just, you know, Raptors fans who like to complain and basically are actively looking for things to complain about in many circumstances. And, you know, Raptors fans were just looking for those good games and ignored the bad games and went, oh, wow, look, Terrence Davis did this. He broke 27 points for the Sacramento Kings. But, you know, as a whole, I don't think the stats are tremendously impressive. And I think that, you know, for Terrence Davis, sure, the shooting stats got a little bit higher, but ultimately it boils down to a less talented Sacramento Sacramento Kings, which, you know, it's funny to say because they actually finished above us in the standings. But I think it's a less talented Sacramento Kings who gave a lot more of the offensive roles to Terrence Davis. The Raptors just simply did not have the space to do. Now, stats, again, don't tell the whole story when it comes to Terrence Davis. So the stats for me weren't that impressive with the Sacramento Kings. You know, I think there were certain games that jump out at you, but as a collective, not that impressive and that's down to consistency the consistency is something that that really has a norby when it comes to terrence davis because he could have a really good game for the raptors like you saw the kings could have a 27 point game just as easily as he could have maybe a two point game just as easily because he is wildly inconsistent when it comes to his performances you never know exactly what you're going to get it's a bit of a loose cannon and i think that that comes down to his decision making he takes on some absolutely ridiculous shots sometimes he will wind down the entire shot clock on his own to hit a st well to try to hit a step back deep three and when there's other guys open maybe that there's a little bit of a passing rotation going on that he can completely stump I, I just felt like he was a little bit out of place with the Toronto Raptors season even a struggling Toronto Raptors team and he's another guy that when health and safety protocols hit this team and we needed guys to step up in the place of the five guys who were out for those health and safety protocols he was not a guy who stepped up into that whereas last season I felt like when there was that next man up mentality a little more prominently in the team when he was called upon to step in Terrence Davis had some good games and sure there were inconsistencies of course a rookie and you know he's a second year player here sure there are going to be inconsistencies but I think that something that is unforgivable is your decision making I think execution of your play is forgivable like Malachi Flynn I thought that his decision making I make this comparison all the time I thought that Malachi Flynn this season his execution to start the season was very poor but I thought that the thought process that went into taking on shots to making passes I thought that those were correct it's just he didn't execute correctly and that's fine because execution comes over time the more you practice and I think as we moved on in this season we saw Malachi Flynn's talent start to be executed more frequently but when it came to Terrence Davis he had the talent but he was just a bonehead on the court sometimes times you know I, I there were certain occasions where he wasn't taking very good shots for the Raptors again those deep threes sometimes his shot selection just wasn't very good and on defense I thought he was a humongous liability on defense as it came to um you know on ball 
defending. I thought that maybe the guy got past him a little bit too often. And the fouling. He fouled so often and so unnecessarily on some occasions. I remember the game, one of the games against Boston, Peyton Pritchard, the shot clock winding down with about, like, he was about seven feet away from the three-point line, just hucking up a three. And for some reason... Terrence Davis felt the need to go and jump up with him and fouled him and gave him three shots at the line. And that's just one specific example. But that example just showcases like stuff that continuously happened. This is just one of those specific examples that I do remember. Because why on earth would you go foul a guy with the shot clock winding down when he's nowhere near the three-point line, hucking up a three, giving him some free points at the line? And that's just, again, one example I've seen. I think that he turned the ball over a little bit too much. I just think that he just looked out of sync with the rest of the team as it came to, you know, setting up offensive plays. I think that talent-wise, you know, there's something there to work with. But I think decision-making-wise, the Raptors really aren't going to miss this guy. And Nick Nurse, midway through the season in that torrid March stretch, decided to have some stability with the guys coming off the bench. And he decided that, you know, we want guys that we can rely on game in, game out. And Malachi Flynn and Paul Watson were the guys that he would typically turn to off the bench instead of Terrence Davis. That was because you knew what you'd get out of those guys. When they came in, you understood what they were going to get. You didn't have this wild card like Terrence Davis that you'd throw in. I know maybe that wild card did help you some games. The Minnesota game where he hits a really late three to put us up 84-81. One of the lowest scoring games of the season. But, you know, there were certain times when he did that, but it just didn't happen enough time to warrant that loose cannon and the unpredictability of Terrence Davis on the court. Couldn't produce at a consistent rate for the Raptors. You just did didn't know what sort of Terrence Davis was going to step on the court on any given day, which took him out of the rotation, which very much limited his playtime. And the Raptors decided that when they needed to open up a roster spot, get a second round pick for him and move on and see if you can find some better replacements. And I don't think a single day has gone by where I think, hmm, you know what? I really wish that Terrence Davis was still on the team. I wish we didn't trade him. That doesn't really happen. I don't ever look at a game and think this game needs Terrence Davis. You know, I question why the Raptors traded him. And for that reason, I don't think there was a mistake here. I think that the Raptors, they cashed in on a guy who, you know, they couldn't quite rely on. And maybe for Sacramento, who he will get more play time for, maybe he will have a bit of success there. And he's a young player. He's 24 years old and still has a lot to prove in the NBA. And with a bigger role in a team like Sacramento, I think that maybe he can find something that he displayed in his rookie season with, with the Raptors. But as far as, you know, if he was still on the Raptors, I just don't think he would really have a role on this team for next season. We are already very guard heavy and we have the likes of Malachi Flynn and Jalen Harris coming up into the fold here that maybe we just don't really need Terrence Davis and a second round pick is a fine return considering you know what guys like Evan Fournier are going for so for that reason to round it all off you know I just don't think that he was consistent enough I just didn't think he was a good enough defender and all of this together mixed with all of the personal problems and the negative press and you'll see there's the one percent all of that combined together makes me think that there was no mistake here. We traded him. We moved on. We'll get a second round pick. We got an asset here to maybe make a move before the draft or even just draft a player. And the Raptors will move on without any regrets here. So again, I understand this is a controversial player to talk about, but let's keep this conversation about basketball. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. But that wraps up for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, be sure to hit that like button. If you did enjoy the video at any point and follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash amateur hour sports next to my head is the subscribe button for the channel if you did enjoy the video make sure to subscribe as well help us on our road to 3,000 subscribers also check out some other videos by the channel the most recent video and another one you may like and always remember at the end of the day i believe what i say if you disagree that is okay opinion is everything when it's come to talking about sport everybody has their own opinion see you again next time